This is a HeadGum Podcast. So how many of you guys noticed that the coffee pour was different in the last episode? I forgot that you did that. Yeah, you know, a lot of people didn't realize that, like, we've just been using the same coffee pour for yeah. probably, like, 70 episodes I now. Saw, like, we got a comment on SoundCloud, which, by the way, <laughs> listen on SoundCloud, you can leave a comment. Yeah. Um, and it just said that they, it took them, like, 40 episodes or something to realize that it was the same exact pour. We, <laughs> there was a time where we were doing, like each week different coffee pour like but whatever. But then you know when we were like having lattes and stuff it wasn't really working out. Yeah we wanted it to be consistent. Anyway so we hope that was crisper. Whoa that was. Yeah, a, I'm having a nice vivid sip. That was a vivid robust sip. <laughs> anyway this is Coffee with Rachel. I'm Rachel. I'm Chris. And well, let's just talk about the coffee while we're at the top of the hour you know what I'm saying. Top of the hour. Top of the hour. By the way we're filming this like early in the day. Because I want to spend the rest of the day crafting, which we'll get into later. So yeah. we're getting this done. Here, you want to talk about the coffee? Yeah, this is, wow, this bag. So this is some espresso right now. Yeah. This is La Prima Espresso Italiano from Pittsburgh. You wouldn't think it's from Pittsburgh. You <laughs> this know? is from Jenna, by the way. Yeah, and it says, Our darkest roast, sharp body, smoky aroma, and dark chocolate and cedar. So uh, that's pretty sweet. Sounds like a fucking candle description. Oh, cool. There's a Best Buy and not like there's a store. Best Buy. There's oh a my Best God, Buy is there in a certain the bag. city. <laughs> <laughs> uh, November 17th. So, oh, my God, our anniversary. Oh, my God. That's cute. It was roasted just like me on August 17th. OK, so not too long ago, bitch. Wow. That's well, fantastic. Thank you. This is like a big ass bag, too. It's going to last a while. Jenna also sent. A very fantastic shirt. Oh it, my god, it's yes. It's my pumpkin spice t-shirt. Yeah. That was really All the pumpkin fantastic. spice paraphernalia right now mm-hmm. that Chris has been receiving is just, you know, enviable. Yeah. Really, you know, corn in my cob. It's true. <laughs> it's honestly like pumpkin spice season at this point. Like, Chris came home. Oh my god, so... Yesterday I was waiting for packages and I stayed home and Chris went grocery shopping Mm -hmm. and he can't, he comes home and he had like a stressful ass fucking time, but he still managed to get two pumpkins, pumpkin Cheerios, and then something else. Oh, pumpkin, like they weren't really pumpkin flavor, but they had like orange icing cookies. Oh yeah. They're harvest is what they call them. Harvest cookies. Either way. Now we already have, like, two pumpkins. The cats were very confused by them, even though we do this every year. Like, <laughs> get with it, guys. It's a fucking Come board. on, guys. <laughs> Come on, pumpkin. <laughs> um, God, you didn't know this uh, holiday season is going to be our two years since getting Lila. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's another November, November thing. 22nd, yeah. bitch. Oh. Why? Because 22 is my favorite number. Yeah. So I remember it. But also, I probably would have remembered it because we got squeezy on like Valentine's Day. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Keep your cats, get them at holiday times. Yeah. Know? Because what's better like than getting Sweezy a Valentine's Day gift, you know? Like, <laughs> it come fits on. his personality. It really perfectly. does. Like, honestly, of all the holidays that Sweezy got, it's like the worst representation of him as a person. Also, the name that he got is the worst representation of him. Girl, we know. But, like, think about it. Like, what holiday exudes the squan? Like, I don't know. Uh, what's... God, is it... Um... What's like the day of the year that like the top one? What's the gets, Jewish like, a bonus? holiday that you're supposed to like just repent your sins all day or Yom whatever? Kippur. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, that would be squeezy. <laughs> if I had Yom Kippur. <laughs> Yom. And then uh, Lila's more of like pretty much anyone's holiday, but oh, I would say God. she's an Easter kind of binge. Oh yeah. Not yeah. for like the Jesus side of that, but, but for like the, the, egg. the chickadee egg bunny kind of vibe. <laughs> I know that that was. No, oh, she. Oh, whoa! <laughs> this espresso is getting right in my espresso. All right, well, let me do the coffee fact, and then we'll yeah. talk about things. Okay. Um, I got this, too much to talk about. Are you are you listening to this? Yeah, we got a lot to talk about. Uh, the coffee break has a hometown. Okay. Uh, Slot in Wisconsin bills itself as the place where the coffee break originated. Every year, the town holds a coffee break festival to oh. celebrate the major contribution to the days of workers everywhere. Yo, we should just go. Yeah, that would be fucking fantastic. Cheese, coffee, peace. Oh my god, Wisconsin! I was like, I feel geez. like there's not a lot else, and I feel like 
Green Bay baggers. Like, that's what I know. <laughs> yeah. I'll that walk, 70 show. <laughs> yeah, I'll walk out with one of those fucking, like, cheese hats and I'll leave. <laughs> I'll, I'd go to that. You know, do you get a coffee break at Amazon? It's... Just like yeah. a break? <laughs> yeah, it's not like coffee break. It's just I have breaks. We didn't have that at Target. We had cigarette breaks. Oh. And then I would just go outside because I was like, I should be allowed. Yeah, definitely should be allowed. Because that's fucked up. But then I was just like getting secondhand smoke, so it's probably not like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. So we got a lot of things to talk about today. Yeah, we do, bitch. Okay, that's first of weird. all, we just took the Patronus quiz that just got added to Pottermore yes. today, which mm-hmm. I didn't even realize. Um, first of all, I want to drag Pottermore just a moment because they have now sorted me incorrectly two times. <laughs> okay, we all fucking know I'm a goddamn Hufflepuff. Like, it's yeah. not a secret. It sorted me into Ravenclaw at first, which I was like, <laughs> flattering, I guess. Because, <laughs> like, I, I know I'm intelligent, but I'm not, like, I'm not the type of person that, like, craves to... I'm out of Hermione, okay? Yeah. Um... And then, just now, Slytherin. Now, of course, I used to love Slytherin before I saw any of the shit. (laughs) Like, any of the movies or anything. Because you always like the bad characters. Duh. Bad, but Snape's a Slytherin bitch. Slytherins aren't all bad. (laughs) Yeah, I guess. What's a non-bad Slytherin? Snape. I know, but, like, other than him. (laughs) Voldemort, you know? (laughs) Tom Real. Um, That was me being a Harry Potter fucking genius over here oh, now God. that i'm reading them um <laughs> but anyway it's sort of me and slytherin i'm pissed about it because that's just f- like i couldn't do shit mm-hmm. like come on but what's your patronus oh it well first it gave me a hawk and i was like that's gosh, hawk yeah oh gosh oh, i don't know what the fuck that is so i was like i'm not liking this so i made a new account and then it sorted me into slytherin i'm like whatever but my patronus is now a wild boar and i think it truly that's, that's gets That's pretty, me. you know, that's pretty good. Like, flighty, oh. could run <laughs> out of a situation, but also, like, has the little toughness. Like, sometimes I could, like, you know, <laughs> do something, but then I just run away tuss. squealing. <laughs> I just feel like that's very me. Oh, also, fuck. the hog nature. I mean, fuck. <laughs> like, I just think it's all good. What's that's yours? fantastic. I got a ginger cat. That's also perfect. That's just beautiful. I just picture crush. Yeah. <laughs> I got ginger cat. It also sorted... Oh, Ooh, my God. Unprofessional. Wow. Whoa. Rude. I got sorted into Gryffindor. Um, and then my... I'm just, I have her up here, so I'm just I saying like it that all. you could be a Gryffindor. Like, I know you're more of a raven slut, but I... I could be, like, the Hermione type Gryffindor. of Gryffindor. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's smart, but she's not oh, a yeah, Ravenclaw. I forget that she's not a Ravenclaw. <laughs> God damn it. See, I just said it again. I said, I was like, oh, I'm not Hermione. And she's, you know, because I'm yeah. just thinking, like, she's a Ravenclaw. I need to get my shit together, honestly. Well, in the uh, over morning houses, it sort of mean the Thunderbird. I didn't do that one yet. And then you should read that little story because it's really good. Okay. Uh, and then. The Wait, wolf- when you went to Hogwarts, what kind of animal did you bring? I got to know. I brought uh, a white cat because I, I figured Lila would totally come. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they didn't have a gray. Yeah. That was rude. But, like, realistically, like, if Lila was not in my life or Squeezie was not in my life, I probably would have brought an owl. Oh, yeah. Like, I would have brought an owl if I didn't already have a cool cat. But cats are also cool. But owls, I don't know. Isn't Lila fetching you your mail? <laughs> yeah, but, like, an owl. <laughs> like, yeah, Lila I and know. an owl together. <laughs> Picture Lila with Hedwig. Think about that That'd image. That'd be so much white fluffy goodness. I'm going to make that out of clay, <laughs> which we'll have to talk about. Oh, my God. Your bitch. <laughs> God damn. So. Lots of things. While I'm having my, like, mid-20s crisis over here, I've decided <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm desperate for something that I can, like, sink my passion into because I just feel like I've been doing the same things for so many years now that I need something new to, like, have a creative focus for that's like a little bit more handsy than like you know reading more or you know designing shit on the computer we've we've talked about you know we had a whole episode about crafting i like doing shit with my hands i love playing guitar and stuff but like i wanted to do something that like i can share with people and i've talked about like how i want to do fucking pottery but like your bitch doesn't have a pottery wheel okay in a whole fucking room and, and like, like a fucking kiln to like bake them in yo stuff. that's the like, thing like how do people do that like i know that there's like smaller wheels but like 
do you gotta buy a smaller kiln and is that a fire hazard like i just i, I feel yeah. like i could never do any of that until i had like a backyard or they like probably a shed. have like yeah a yard that they have a thing in so in the future when me and chris are living up in the mountains and we're off the grid i will have like a pottery shed yeah <laughs> in the woods <laughs> and you will be killing all the spiders in there and i'll have like a citronella candle and i'll be lit yep but anyway, so as a kid, I was always obsessed with clay, which is like very important to the story mm-hmm. <laughs> and crafting and all that kind of stuff. So I had been like all over the internet, just like kind of researching stuff because I'm like, I'm artistic, but I cannot draw or paint. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can paint like a wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but not like my friend Rebecca can paint. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're not, and like Brie can draw. And I'm just like, I can sing, I can read music, like, um, I can somewhat sculpt things. So anyway, I was like looking on YouTube and there's an entire community of people making miniature food. Well, they make other miniature shit too. Yeah. But miniature food. And it like rang this like big bell in my brain. Cause like I used to be obsessed with miniature shit when I was younger like I first of all of course I had like all the Barbies all that kind of stuff but like I'm talking like real dollhouse shit because my one friend who I was like in softball with at her house they they were so cool because they did like at the time like I don't think dog shows are great now yeah. but like as a kid I was like that's so cool they had dogs that did dog shows and then the mom had like these beautiful dollhouses that were like uh, they didn't they weren't for children to play with you know like they're like set up they are collector item type Fancy. things. Yeah. And I always was so envious of those. And then I need to know if like any of you guys listening, first of all, who else was obsessed with American Girl? Okay. <laughs> like, let's be real. That was like an addiction. And I didn't have the doll. Like, the girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the baby, Bitty Baby, I think it was called. Oh my and God. like looking back, I'm like, a baby. Like, <laughs> what was I doing? Um, but they had these things that were, sh- they were on the market for like a year in like 2000 and then they got taken off because they were like a fire hazard and they were called AG minis, like American girl. And they were just like this shadow box type of situation. And you just put like, they gave you all of the, I don't know, ingredients to make a room. And there were like bedrooms. <laughs> there was like a New York loft that looked super a cool. A sprinkle of couch, you know, yeah. a pinch of chairs, you know, one fourth <laughs> cup throw pillow um and they were like the walls were magnet and there were actual like real lights that you could plug into real outlets hence the fire problem (laughs) um a lot of people's outlets were like fucked up and weird and they were definitely touchy but like mine worked i had a ceiling fan that fucking spun bitch okay like i had a lava lamp i had the 70s looking room it was so cool but everything was like super tiny and like i wasn't like i didn't have like a doll or anything it was just like I wanted to decorate the house, Mm -hmm. you know, like little mini stuff. And now I do that in Sims. You know, I always have like been obsessed with mini stuff. And when I had that like dollhouse thing, I would look online at all of like the really expensive like dollhouse food that people could buy because like they're a huge collector's item. Like there's this entire community of people that like are collectors for dollhouses and shit. Yeah. And they have like all this like realistic, like hyper realistic looking food that they've made out of clay. And it just looks so cool. And so I found videos of like tutorials of how to do it on YouTube. And I watched like every one. (laughs) Oh my God. I was every fucking one. Literally every one. I watched so (laughs) many. I subscribed to so many channels. They're very relaxing type videos to watch. Like if you're the type of person that wants something relaxing to watch, watch people shape things out of clay. Okay. Yeah. Polymer clay. Polymer clay. Just look polymer clay DIY or tutorial and you got it. Mm -hmm. And I watched a million videos and then I was on Pinterest and then I was looking. And then you're ended. You want to step onto Pinterest. That's where the crafting like takes a whole new level. I'm like, there's like Martha Stewart, how to mix clay to get like different pastels and other colors. And so they also use like the, the food, the way they make it is like they make it out of clay and then they get like, you could use eyeshadows, which I was like, (laughs) watch me use like 
modern renaissance to like fucking shade this bread. <laughs> but like I wasn't going to use my expensive eyeshadows, but a lot of them just use like chalk pastels to do it. And so I ordered, like, I literally was just like, you know what? I'm going to fucking do this. I'm going to make a bunch of teeny miniature food and like maybe open an Etsy store for it. And even if I don't, like, I'm just going to make it for fun and like also put magnets on the back of it so I can make like just fun magnets. And I don't even have to do just like food. I want to do plants. I want to do geodes. Like I have like the a cats, bunch of ideas. Cats, you know. duh. And like, you know, like we could decorate the house with like some holiday themed ones. Like, yeah, I'm pumped, A guys. Christmas tree and stuff like that. If anyone ever wants to know what to get me for Christmas, it's fucking clay. Like <laughs> polymer clay. I have the Sculpey brand currently, but I'm willing to try Fimo or whatever. Oh my I feel God. very like, ooh. And it's fun because like I love art, but I just like haven't had a medium that like I really like. You know? you know, I always think that, like, you gotta have, outside of, like, what you do for, like, working and stuff, you gotta have, like, a, a, ho- a hobby, a, per- a thing that, like, you really sink your time into and get real serious about. Yours is video games. Yeah, mine is always gonna be video games. And, like, while I definitely play a lot more video games than I've ever played in my life now, yeah. it's definitely... I don't know. Like, this is something that, like, there's so many possibilities. And I, the, I was watching like, this interview because this one girl that's, like, incredible at it. Yeah. She got, like, a whole segment on, like, Food Network to talk about it, which I was like, goals, bitch. Because she makes damn. all food. And she was just saying it all spawned out of just, like, a love of food and, like, the texture. And I'm like, that's fucking me. That is so you. So, anyway, I'm really into it. I ordered so much shit. Yeah. I, like, ordered, like, anything I could possibly need to get this, like, hobby going. Because that's, I feel like, part of a hobby or, like, getting diving into, like, a new passion project is, like, you have to get, like, all the starter shit. And yeah. that really deters people from, like, getting that momentum. Mm-hmm. Luckily, clay tools are extremely cheap. Yeah. Like, all of this stuff clay is Clay so in general cheap. was pretty cheap. Yeah. So. And apparently you can make it, like, you can oh, DIY God. making clay out of, like, storm starch, <laughs> corn starch, and glue, and you can make polymer clay. Wow. Like, you could dye it, I guess, or you could just, like, make white, because that's, like, what you would need the most of. Yeah. So that's fucking intense. Girl, it's gonna be lit. I made two loaves of bread. They were my first pieces, and I think they turned out pretty damn good for them yeah, being my first. They did. You made just, like, a... I don't know, like a regular loaf, and then you made a challah. Because, yeah, of challah. course. I'm waiting for my glaze gets here today. I'm gonna give it a nice like egg shine. <laughs> I'm just like really excited. I'm gonna make like avocado toast. Like the videos are so inspiring, and like the Instagram accounts, and and I know it's like it's like well, what are you making this for? Like it's literally just for fun and me. Yeah, that's and what the hobby's for. for I definitely want to make like. Well, first of all, I think it'll be fun to take photos of it all for like Instagram, just because like it's just cool. Yeah, yeah. But also, I do want to make like an Etsy for it and eventually like first I would just like to make like magnet sets for people and yeah, then just pretty, do like, like actual simple miniatures. kind of thing to start off with as magnets. Things that have like a flat side or whatever. Yeah. So yeah if you guys have any like foods that or desserts or little things that you think I should make out of clay fucking tell me. Yeah. I'm getting really into it. And um Secret Santa I already said. Yeah with the Secret Santa coming up we'll have info on that next month guys. Yeah but, uh, it's coming up <laughs> quick i feel like the holidays are like around the yeah corner. they're coming here but uh whoever gets rachel in that is gonna have <laughs> some, so much uh, clay you're getting some clay <laughs> i'm gonna make like i'm probably gonna just like ask you like what your favorite things are i feel like that's gonna be part of the survey or something i don't know like we have to figure it out but i yeah. just want to make like cool magnets for whoever gets me plus like other shit mm-hmm. that'll um, be uh, fun but let us know how you feel about a 20 dollar maximum like I don't, th- I don't even really want to spend. Not including like the shipping costs to that. Like on the actual like the thing. gift, yeah. Um, like twenty dollars worth of supplies if you're making it, I guess you know, like something like that. But like it doesn't have to be twenty, but like it as it can't a go as a benchmark, like, yeah. And I don't even think like it could be more like ten or fifteen. Like you know, yeah. don't cheap out though. <laughs> like you know, mm. I'm we're going with like, the honor system here, so we're hoping that everyone's like. You know, yeah. gonna actually give it because like we're trying to have fun, so you you hope everybody puts effort into it. Um, yeah, but and, like twenty dollars uh, maximum because I don't want anyone to feel like they can't afford to do it. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, and well, yeah, it's not just for Patreon people too. I had a question about that. It's yeah. for literally anyone listening. We're gonna have it all set up. 
Yeah, it's going to be international too, guys. Uh, we're just, you know, we'll have more info later yeah. when we uh, set the date. We've been playing dates. this for a while now. I'm very excited. Guys, the artwork's have, coming out soon. We have so much shit planned for the holidays, and we're going to give you that information next month. Yeah. And it's because it's only September. I need to chill. Yeah, but we had coming. Yeah, we're gonna have a like huge post on our Reddit probably with like all oh, the yeah. shit that we're planning the for links. the holiday season. And we didn't get to do anything last year because you know I was fucking unemployed. So like, <laughs> yo, but this year you're double employed, bitch. Yeah. Or so something. I was uh, flipping out on Twitter yesterday, and I said that I had a meeting that was giving me really fucking terrible anxiety because it was at the end of my day. Yeah, the worst time to plan like a meeting where you're trying to find out if you got like a job. Yeah, also <laughs> within retrograde, which ends tomorrow, today, something yeah, like that. Yeah, today, the 22nd. Everyone was telling us, like, okay, don't apply for jobs. Don't, like, make any big changes. Of course, that's when, like, a job shows up on my fucking doorstep that was, like, almost like a perfect fit for me. Yeah. So, I got a new job. It's within Amazon. So, like, I'm still there. But, I, I mean, I could say it. I got a job at Amazon Video now. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. I hope we get so many TV show recommendations. Yeah. So, um, though, bones. can I just say we did watch like the pilot of the, what is it? The man in the high castle, the Nazi show, you know? Like, yeah. If the Nazis won world war two and it was really campy and the acting was really bad. So I like, don't know. Like it's an interesting concept, but I think they it's were a great just, concept. And I feel like the book that it's based on is probably real good. Oh, it's a book. I didn't yeah. Know. It's like a book. Duh. And then like in the book, there's a book called The Man in the High Castle, and that's uh, and that's like exception. Yeah, and that book is like if the Americans and Had the Allies won. won the pa- like won the fucking war, then like what would have happened? Whoa, happens? okay. Well, the the I kind of want to keep watching because like the idea of it is interesting, but like if that acting doesn't improve, it just sounds also, like everybody's the story reading. was kind of like the way they set up the story. They set show up was just like. There's secret things happening right now. Ooh, hush, hush. Like. And it just, like, all, I don't know. It was just very easy the way it all started. It was weird. But, and it was just a lot of, like, hey, let's show a swastika and a lot of violence and, like, not much actual, like, good plot, yeah, you know? Yeah, so yeah. I feel like they were There's just trying to, like. There's a lot of shock like, factor of, like, yeah. wow, here's Nazis and it's not. Yeah, they yeah. didn't have to be that obnoxious. <laughs> I've always wondered, like, with the promotion of that show, like, how are they allowed to use all of the symbols, I guess? You know, like, even, like, I know they can use it all in their show, yeah. but, like, in advertising, like, most people probably would be against, like, having, you know, mm-hmm. a hate symbol on their website with yeah. an ad for, like, a banner for this new Amazon show. Like, I wonder how that works. Anyway. I don't know what they do. I think they just use, like, red and black colors in general. Yeah, so, I don't know. I haven't really seen any advertisements. DPH, maybe that's why. Yeah. Maybe it's kind of like a word with words with friends. <laughs> word, you know, word of mouth yeah. type of spreading. But anyway, you got a new job, Amazon Video. It's cool. fucking fantastic. and It's not a customer service at all job, yeah, this is which is my cool. first, like, full-time job after being out of college that's not, like, a customer service position, yeah. which is very exciting because my schedule will no longer be dictated by when, like, a customer service center needs to be open. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So now, like, instead of, like... You know, I know you were doing social media to help customers, but now you're just doing like straight up technical stuff, which I know you always really are into. Yeah. Why didn't you ever do um, like the IT department at Millersville? Remember how we had friends that worked there? Like you should have done that shit. Yeah. I mean, like that was more like they would probably just take all the computer science people and. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. Because they were like fixing. And I was already busy doing like the the, weather thing. The weather thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that was technically like my first non-customer facing job, but that was one hour a week. Yo, I learned <laughs> that my my cousin is a environmental science major. That was so you guys that would probably get along. <laughs> I feel like eventually in my future, I want to actually utilize my meteorology. Oh and yeah, like maybe- I feel like you could do it more in like a. Uh, An activism way. I really am interested in forestry stuff, especially being here in the Pacific Northwest. Like forest conservation and like preservation stuff. It really. Firewatch got you. (laughs) Firewatch honestly did get me because I'm like, shit, man. Like, this is just like, it's so pretty. And like, I want to live in the forest one day and I just want to like preserve it. 
God, nothing freaks me out though more than like that one scene in Firewatch where you're standing in the forest and all of a sudden you see like a silhouette of another person. And you're like so far deep in the forest you would never see another. Per- oh, yeah. Definitely. Just like that's my nightmare is like being at our like if we're living in the middle of the woods somewhere or in like in the mountains and you are not supposed to be seeing people near yeah. you at all and then like just running it. That's like, fucking oh, terrifying. Scary as fuck. Which by the way, that came out on Xbox One. You guys should play it if you have an yeah. Xbox. It's pretty good. It gets, it's very, it's good dialogue, very creepy. A little anticlimactic at the end, but It's not you know, very creepy, but I was creeped out. It was, got some spook. There's some creep factor. Yeah. But it's not like jump scare, you know? Mm-hmm. I always, I always feel like when people ask me if something is like too scary, they mean like jump scare. You know? Yeah. Because like, that's just like annoying. So it's like threatening my eyes. I love when things can be scary, but not like, like Stranger creepy. Things was creepy in... A little scary, but it wasn't jump scares. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you knew when shit was about to happen because there were tells. Like, the wall would just... And the music. And happen. The, yeah. <laughs> the music, the lights. You know, there were ideas. Well, the wall was bubbling. You kind of knew something was going to fucking happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. When we were watching Mr. Robot finale, like, there was a scene where there's, like... Well, you know, they're having, like, a blackout in New York. So there's, like, flickering lights. And I was just like, haha, the Demigorgon. <laughs> Like, oh my god, are the lights gonna point to the fucking thing? Yo, like if the lights ever blink now, I'm gonna be fucked. <laughs> because we live like isn't that supposed to be Pacific Northwest? I feel like it was Oregon. Yeah, I hate it. Why is all the creepy shit based in the Pacific Northwest? That fucking now? Uh, nothing that ever no happened. No sleep story about the forest, per- the forest guy with the yeah. stairs in the forest. Like that was that. like Seattle. And that shit. was in the Pacific Northwest. Yo, uh, what is it? Life is strange. Oh yeah. Speaking that's... of Stranger Things, ha. that's also like Pacific Northwest, Oregon. Oregon's got some creep. Oregon factor. Really doing some things. They're like in every scary movie except for like Haunting in Connecticut. Connecticut, you know, because <laughs> we knew that happened in Connecticut. Stars it's Hollow, signs. actually. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my God! <gasps> signs was in Pennsylvania. Yeah, we have alien crop circles. That's all we got. Yeah, we got those. We I got the M Night Shyamalan. We got his stuff. Um, the asylum that people go to for Halloween. Penitentiary. Yeah, that shit. We have that, and then we have crop circles. I guess. Are there real crop circles in Pennsylvania? Who knows? Honestly. I would like of all the places that aliens are going to come and like greet us, Pennsylvania. Come on, boy, so girl, boring. <laughs> girl, what's happening over there? I was actually reading. There was a list of like the top fifty cities to live in, or like towns to live in in yeah. the U.S. And I was looking for Pennsylvania, <laughs> and it didn't show up until like the forties, which I thought okay. was funny. But it was guess what town it was? You're going to scream. You're going to plots. Is Levittown. It? Oh my god. Why? What? Literally, it's so bad. Like, do they, did they know it's bad? Like, I don't understand. Why? I don't know. It was just, well, they're talking about, like, the bougie part of Levittown, not, like, where we were. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, the, the part where there's, like, a Starbucks <laughs> and, like, a Panera. That fucking defines the bougie. Yeah, like, like that's, oh, they were talking, like, Bristol Township, too, okay. like, where... Like, the schools, like, they're not talking to Chamonix School District. They're talking, like, the, the good Council Rock or something. Which is air quotes. <laughs> I know. I'm, I don't know what the fuck. Anyway, it was just funny. And I didn't see your town either, but. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect it. But, like, there were, you know, it was just funny. that It was, like, all the way until the bottom. And then it was my <laughs> town. I was like, no way. No but way. But they meant, they meant the bougie part, which you forget exists. Because it's kind <laughs> of like in Langhorn. Anyone who lives in Pennsylvania right now is like, yes, I get I you. I feel you. <laughs> like, no one is saying Bucks County is, like, ritzy. Come on. <laughs> who the fuck thinks that? No one. Um, Fucking God. They just got frozen yogurt. Like, <laughs> you know? They're still on that. I know. By the way, I miss frozen yogurt. Me too. I mean, we have it here. I just, like, haven't gone. I kind of want to. It's a good Um, time. Is there vegan frozen yogurt? There has to be. California, definitely. Oh, yeah. They have to have that here, though. There's a lot more vegan options here now. Yeah, there is. They're getting, like, full restaurants and shit, which I like, because then you don't have to worry about, like, anything. You're just like, okay, this whole place. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She good. Exactly. Um, Uh, If if you're ever in Seattle and you want a vegan restaurant, go to Plum Bistro. Yeah. That was very fantastic. We need to go back. Mm -hmm. Anyway. It's a fucking hashtag bisexuality awareness week. Yes, bitch. Or just bi week, whatever one. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool. You're bisexual. Yeah, she making, is. Making that aware. <laughs> <laughs> making moves. 
Um, of course, that's when like that fucking Halsey article comes out too. Yeah, we said last episode that we talked about it just a little bit, and I have, man, it was like, why is this fucking like entire novel here? It was like, just why did this person this... even write any of this? Like, what was the point of view that I was supposed to get across? That like this author is bitter and jealous of this famous singer. Yeah, I that's don't the vibe. This like quote unquote like new age kind of singer. This the, is the definitely way like brought, a music snob. You know, like oh, I listen to like Heim. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> definitely like a Heim listener, God or damn. you know, like oh, I would rather listen to like Saint Vincent or like you know, like like. Yeah. Besides all of the biphobic shit, there, oh was, there was, like, just, like, oh, started on, like, SoundCloud and got discovered on SoundCloud. Yeah, like, they were dragging it works with, like, just Tyler like Posey. Star, yeah, they dragged Tyler Posey, too. I'm like, bitch, he was in Made in Manhattan. Like, he's not, like, a fucking new thing. Come on. Come like, on. He worked with Ralph Fiennes. Come on. <laughs> what the fuck? Anyway. It the was, subtle drags of, like, just, like, people that have, like, big social media followings to get famous that way. Like, like this bitch what? probably has, like, two followers on Twitter like she's an egg on Twitter like that sucks <laughs> that really does um no it was just it was well first of all like I am not like a big fan of Halsey you know like I don't really listen to her music yeah. and you know I cringe at the whole like she wrote songs about like One Direction or something like yeah Swift it's a little whatever, embarrassing yeah. but we've all had an embarrassing past I would say I mean yeah your first videos you know there was a lot of things in there <laughs> that were the brand video I collected days. erasers like <laughs> Who the fuck am I? So you drink creamers. I mean, come on. We've yeah, all had our past. She collected shrimp tails. <laughs> um, but you're not fucking safe from this uh, either, bitch. Fuck. Okay, Mister, you have been arrested before. <laughs> um, but anyway, so like, I'm not like saying like, oh, I'm a big Halsey fan. Like, that's where this is coming from. I was just reading it, and it was just she was like attacking her appearance, like because like I guess certain things that Halsey wears or the way that she dresses and stuff, like that's apparently a factor in whether or not she's actually bisexual you know like i just think it's so frustrating when people like think there's a look to any sexuality like you're just a person and this is your sexuality it's a part of you it's not your whole identity and there's not like a fucking dress code there's not a dress code for any sexuality or gender or anything i used to have friends tell me that like i didn't look gay enough and i wasn't going to be giving good vibes to like gay women and it's like no you're just you i'm just myself man you want somebody to fucking be interested in you well, I know just that, being like, you. it can be, I know that there's, like, a whole, like, femme invisibility thing, like, if you are feminine, and, like, sometimes, like, it's hard to tell if these women are gay, and so I know that there's, like, that entire factor, but, yeah. like, it's honestly just hard to tell if anyone is on the spectrum, because, I mean, like, you the shouldn't really be, is, like, assuming anything. Yeah, man. Like, everyone's on the Kinsey scale somewhere. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's kind of hard. You have to, like, oh, I don't fucking know. Get to know them. <gasps> Talk. <gasps> wow. Whoa. You Crazy. can't just, like, look at someone and be like, mm, I'm going to say, like, that's a bisex. <laughs> I'm going to say that's a bisexual. <laughs> um, like, that's just not a look. I don't know. I hate that, like. Unless they have, like, a fucking, like, pin or you're wearing one of my bye bye phobia shirts. Yeah. Like. <laughs> But, like, then you could just be, like, supporting the cause, bitch. I don't know. You, you, you can't make it assume, you know, assume we make an ass out of you and me. Like they say, hey. I hate you so much. You're, like, a fucking uh, dad. <laughs> I am. I just hate that that article, though, she was basically, like, a queer person that's in the media that's, like, got a big following or whatever doesn't have to, like, it's up to them to decide how much of, like, an advocate for causes like that activism. they want to be. And, like, that you do not, you're not required to be, like, like saying things for advocacy like at every moment but then she like slams halsey for not doing that at all times like like okay ideally celebrities that are you know lgbt i hope that they do talk about it but yeah. like i don't expect that to consume their entire like work and consume all of their I don't know. Because your sexuality is not your entire identity. Yeah, because I don't want that, too. Like, I mean, I hope that, like, you know, Halsey tweets, like, happy bye week or some shit. Mm -hmm. You know, any of the bisexual celebrities or whatever. But, like, you know, I don't expect them to be, like, only doing advocacy. Unless they're, like, that's their body of work now. Like, Leonardo DiCaprio won't shut the fuck up about the ocean. Yeah. And that's fine. Like, because he's, like, dedicating, you know, fucking Ruffalo and his fracking. fracking. <laughs> like, we get it. Like, he's be passionate about it. And, like, you know, sometimes you don't, like, you... 
I don't know, you're just living. I don't know. I just think it's, like, tough to... It's just dumb. I I mean, she's definitely, like, said stuff about it before, and she responded to the article, too. But, like, you know, it's up to there's her also, to decide how much she wants to talk about it. Exactly. And there's also something nice about, like, people being very, like, blunt with their sexuality and not feeling the need to, like, elaborate that much because it, like, normalizes it to a degree. Like, the way some celebrities have come out, like, they're just like, yeah, I'm bisexual, like, when they're asked. And that's, like, literally it. Yeah. Like, what's her face? Bella Thorne. She, like, was kissing another woman on Snapchat who she was, like, basically alluding to was her new girlfriend yeah. and she had dated men before. And then someone just on Twitter was like, so are you bisexual? And she was like, yeah. And that was it. Yeah. And it's like, I love how chill that was because you want it to be like, yeah, this is fucking normal. Like, yeah, that's the way to normalize it. Just another bye. Hey, there you are. So I don't know. The article was shitty though. It was, it was also like comparing her to like Tegan and Sarah because like they have like a certain look that's different from Halsey. And I just think that's kind of shitty. And it just sounded very like snobby. That she wants and like you know, oh they, and like something about like her kissing fans and how like she's been not kissing fans anymore because she gets sick but like they think it's like a reason for her to like not kiss girls because she was uh, kissing female fans really weird first of all I don't think anyone should be kissing their fans yeah I, I just like the whole kissing fan things is a little bit weird but fucking hey whatever weird. you, you want to fucking do I don't know why I don't like it when I hear stories of like people that have like done anything with their yeah fans. it's so weird like I don't like it at all but like now. Her songs as she's getting more popular are leaning more towards like either gender having neutral pronouns. gender neutral pronouns or like having male figures in the videos and stuff like that. Like Tower Posey was in one of her latest videos. Yeah. And like, I mean, bisexual, all, hey, you know, anybody's fucking She can game. have a hot dude in her video and she can have a hot chick in her di- <laughs> Like, it's just, who cares? Who cares? And like, maybe he was free. I don't know. Like, maybe he was able to be booked. Who knows? Yeah. And like, also, you know, I'm all for having gender neutral pronouns in the songs just so that literally anyone listening to it can put whoever they w- are thinking of in the place. Yeah. Like, literally, no matter what your preferences are or your identity or anything, like, you can listen to a song. And be, like, first of all, I don't think, like, the people that get really hung up on, like, pronouns and songs, like, they're like, I could never sing a song like okay i remember in high school when people would sing songs for um like whatchamacallit talent shows and shit. yeah talent shows. and they would like take a song and it'd be like a dude singing a song that someone wrote and like it has like male pronouns so they would change it to like you know because they're like oh can't sing about like it's like oh my god grow the fuck up like yeah i think changing a, you know what i mean like I think so you kept stupid. your the pronouns as the song originally was written yeah because i just think you should just sing the fucking song the it's way just it a is. fucking song yeah like, it doesn't have to be a statement about your sexuality when i know you like people are song. so afraid of being like at all thought of you know what i mean but like also so just having gender neutral pronouns helps like people that are non-binary like connect with music and like also just like anyone you can mm-hmm. put yourself in that position you're like yes all um, in all this was just like a just very weird. detailed like expose on expose. Halsey <laughs> yeah I know in quotes on Halsey who in all fairness is not like the biggest celebrity in the fucking world it's just like you just picked on this one celebrity and you wrote like a whole fucking novel about weird. why you don't like them but you're saying that you're not being mean yeah i don't know it was it was just like it was definitely one of those moments where i'm like okay some internalized misogyny definitely bubbled up over here at buzzfeed you know <laughs> oh which is weird because like they do try to do a lot more you know feminism things over yeah. there they try some shady things going succeed. on in buzzfeed i don't know they're a mess you know i hope all of their talent just leaves because <laughs> they're all like good individually you know they should just a lot of them have already made their own youtube channels and they're fucking compelling as hell mm-hmm. i love it another thing i wanted to talk about was the whole you know i don't want to get into details about brad and angelina's divorce because i think like it's their fucking life you know yeah. i have nothing to do with it i do want to talk about everyone Bring it up. Poor Jennifer Aniston. Leave <laughs> her alone. This is Leave just like two people's it. fucking divorce. Just like. Do you think she really wants to be like the trending tag when this is happening? Like, and still like be known some way to relate to Brad Pitt's life after like him leaving her, you know, everything. God. Like, 
you know, like they had a, like, that was horrible. And like, she probably doesn't, you know, she's happy. She's got like her whole life, her career. I mean, like, let's be real out of all of them. She's the one that's been doing the most work. Yeah. Like Angelina, you know, she's been in Maleficent and a couple other like dark movies. And like, I, I love her, you know, like, and she's been doing a lot more like advocacy, and but like Brad, Brad Pitt's a fucking like, flop. Like, World what's War he Z? In? Like, that's the last Ocean's thing I think of. 15. Like, what the fuck has he been doing? <laughs> Benjamin Button too. Like, I don't know. He hasn't been doing <laughs> shit. And if he has, it's been, like, off my radar, so clearly you know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But anyway, I feel like, just leave her alone. This is, like, just... I, I, I'm so sick of seeing, like, her image being used to celebrate this divorce. Yeah. This, like, this, you know, like, I don't think Jennifer's over here, like, wanting to be, like... Like, she wants Someone who to would up, celebrate like, someone's marriage ending with lots of children yeah, in the mix. Yeah, lots of children in this, like... Exactly. So I think that narrative should end. So if you're I think doing the whole it, narrative should just end. Like, just shut up. They're they're divorced. They're doing and it's their not thing. The end of love. Like, was I upset to hear that? You know, I was like, oh man, I did like them as a couple, and I'm sure it's going to be rough for those kids. But like, they weren't like a fucking, fucking ha- unit. You know, like they're individual people. They can divorce, and you know that'll be the end I'm of that. I'm very Angelina fan, so. I'll be. Oh my god! And there was some biphobic ass shit being said about her. You know, they're talking because she's she bisexual. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. And See, I'm so, learning new bisexual celebrities every day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's like our queen. No, <laughs> but like, um, cause she's so beautiful. Um, you know, who she looks like the really hot girl from Mr. Robot. Yeah. That's with Tyrell. I always forget her actual name in the show. Yeah, I can't remember it right now, but she's so beautiful. They barely say fucking names. I know she. I know. Except for Tyrell, like they just say it's his name. Literally, it. <laughs> and Mr. Robot like, and Elliot. Okay, anyway. Um, but, you know, she's, like, dated women in the past, and so, like, they're using that, like, as a, like, oh, it might have been a motivator for this. It's like, shut the fuck oh up. Oh, my oh, God. these, like, bisexuals can't be in a marriage. Meanwhile, like, her campaign, not her campaign, but, like, people close to her saying it really was, like, his behavior, I guess. So, mm. I don't really know. Honestly, I shouldn't, like, I just was seeing this on my Twitter, and I'm like, okay. Of course, we're going to pull, speculations like, the run shit. wild. Like, bye weeks turning out to be interesting. I don't know. A lot of good things coming out of this week. <laughs> I know. I don't know. But whatever. Hopefully, they're both okay. Yeah. You know, I'm sure they will be. Mm-hmm. I mean, they do both have successful careers, so yeah. I think they'll be fine. <laughs> uh, we did also, we talked last week, we were talking about the Emmys. Yeah. And one of the things that we came out of that with is that we have to watch The People versus O.J. Simpson. So and we watched So it. we watched the entire fucking thing. <laughs> the, it was easy to binge it. Yeah. I cannot get over how great of a job they did with making those people look exactly like the real people. Every... Except for Cuba Gooding Jr. Every does not single look like person, O.J. Simpson. Except for Cuba Gooding Jr. I'm is sorry. perfect. Like, he just doesn't look like him, and he's also, like, he was shorter than a lot of the other people on screen, and, like, he not, like, not... he didn't look like he ever played fucking any sport it, you like, know like they didn't bulk him up at all like oj was just like a lot bigger a and a lot dude. taller and like I, seeing him try on that glove i was like that would fit like i it just didn't seem like it was yeah. a good fit so he was like my he just was like the one that was the least compelling but oh my god literally everyone else mm-hmm. was exact and like I am so glad that those two guys got the awards for playing Johnny Cochran and what is it, Christopher Darden? Yeah, yeah. They they fit looked the exactly roles perfectly. And like just the way that they oh my god, it was insane. Yeah. Also, I thought I wasn't gonna like John Travolta playing what's his face? Shapiro. And yeah. like he looked exactly like him too. It's just funny seeing uh, fucking Ross. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I always kind of thought, like, hey, you're supposed to have, like, a fucking monkey or something like yeah. that. You're weird. Like, <laughs> like, when are you going to be like, he was on a break? <laughs> also, uh, Selma Blair playing Chris Jenner was iconic. Yeah. And also really, and oh my God, Sarah Paulson, of course. Uh, did you see, so Sarah Paulson, like we said last week, won the Emmy for playing Marsha Clark. Mm-hmm. Took Marsha Clark to the Emmys as her date. And then got Marsha Clark's name embossed on her Emmy, like when That's they do the so engraving, amazing. and got her like backstage past like all the security shit to like everywhere where it's just supposed to be the winners. Yeah, just so cool. That's fantastic. I love her. Sarah <laughs> Paulson. Sarah so Paulson. Nice. It makes me want to watch the newest American Horror Story, which also has it's her and like Cuba Gooding Jr. They're like a couple, uh, I think. Okay. 
And I'm like, okay, so Ryan Murphy got, you know, <laughs> he's, just, uh, now and he's like fucking Christopher Nolan, just using all the actors throughout all of his yeah. works. But anyway, I would highly recommend watching it because it was very fun to watch. Yeah. But I would watch the Made in America fucking documentary too. It gives yeah. you so much backstory. Yeah, it gives you, the documentary gives you a lot more backstory into like just the times in California and like, yeah. the, and the, like the atmosphere. Yeah, and like the racial climate. Yeah. It's fucking, like you should read it. And also it'll also reflect a lot of what's going on lately, which is upsetting yeah, it's really like fucked least. up to see how many parallels there are in between then and now. Yeah. But it's a good series, both of those. Yeah, I would highly recommend. All right, so I guess it's time for questions. All right. This is episode 111. (laughs) Make a wish. I don't know. (laughs) Fucking palindromes. I know. Is that what that is? Yeah, when you can read it forwards and backwards. I just know that's like a song by Andrew Bird, so (laughs) that's all I know. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go to Patreon, as oh, always. Fuck. Reddit's like timeout. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, or... Reddit, you know, always has server problems. Oh, there we go, okay. But uh, patreon.com slash coffeewithcrachel, come a bench, you can uh, ask your questions, and we'll go there first. Yes. All right, so Allison Francoy has said, I just started drinking coffee. Oh, my God. You the guys siren. aren't all drinking coffee when watching this show, or watching, listening watching. to the show? Come I on. didn't expect everyone to drink coffee. You guys all have to be drinking coffee. Anyway, okay. um, any tips for finding brands that aren't super bitter? I'm super sorry, guys. You're not getting pulled over right now. That's just the That's cops just driving by. That's just the, uh, yeah. City life. They heard our speech about the climate. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, hmm. Um, Any tips for not finding for finding brands that aren't super bitter? Definitely look for like something that's more of like a breakfast or like a medium. Yeah. Try to avoid like a French roast right away or like an Italian roast because those are usually like any any real dark roast, honestly. Definitely. Just avoid the dark roast. They tend to be more bitter. Definitely go for the medium or avoid Starbucks. Blonde <laughs> roasts. Avoid Starbucks blend. Yeah, just avoid Starbucks in general. And, uh, yeah, I would say French press it for, like, the best flavor if you're, like, really trying. Yeah. I mean, if we had to recommend, we always like Javalia House blend. Ugh. And also from Trader Joe's, it's, like, the organic breakfast blend or something like that. Yeah. That's really good, too. I should use those cans. <laughs> For my charms. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just like on the craft brain. Literally right for now. the past twenty four hours she's I've been, been like, like I, I can make, make this and loaf. like I could do this and I could do that. She's gonna do it all, bitch. All right. Okay, uh this is from Allison who said What are you guys looking forward to doing slash watching or reading or playing by the end of the year? Mm. There's a lot of other questions in here too, but we'll start with that one. <laughs> Um, I guess I'm definitely excited for The Walking Dead Season 3. Yeah, not the, the fucking game. show, the game. Though I do want to know the premiere of the actual show, like who's dead. That's about all I'm interested in. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I like Denny, though. Like, Evil Denny is pretty evil Denny. sick. <laughs> evil Denny with his hot ass from P.S. I Love You. Oh, oh God. Feed me pasta. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I'm excited uh, for those. Uh, watching Potter. the Fantastic Beasts and Rogue One. Yeah, Rogue One. Very excited for both of those. And what else? What games? Anything? Um, for I know you have some stuff. Things. Uh, I mean, I'm interested in playing Battlefield One, but I mean, that's just like a. It's just a fucking World War One game. So. She's not interested. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, in other things. I don't really know. There's not really too much that's like ooh spicy. I know. Um, My show's coming back in general. Yeah, all throughout the fall and December. And we're pretty much just going to be reading Harry Potter books because yeah, I was at Barnes and Noble and there was another book that I wanted to read because I think a movie is coming out soon. But I just don't want to lose my Harry Potter, Harry Potter Harry. M- momentum. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. All right. Uh, what is your favorite song off of Florence's uh, HBHBHB? Is that the name of the album? Oh, yeah. How big, how blue, how beautiful. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, Allison said they saw her June. in... Yeah. Oh my god. They yeah. saw her in concert in June and it was awesome. Everyone has been telling me that if we need to see one live performer, it's Florence. So I think if she ever comes here, we should do it. Oh yeah, definitely. Because I, I could to. imagine first of all, she's got a discography that slays Oh my god, to the gods. <laughs> to the gods. <laughs> 
anyway. That's Chris's new favorite phrase. Um, we all know where he learned it. Oh, fuck. All right. And the last one is tips for making it through my final year of college because I am bored all the time. Ooh. Um, I hmm. kind of feel that sometimes because... You know, like the final senior years of either high school or college. There's a college. lot of wine involved in final year of senior yeah. year of college. What did I just say? <laughs> there a lot was of, a lot of a lot of barefoot wine. Not Put the W H I N E. Not whining. Wine. But that too. <laughs> just knowing like everyone's bitching. Also, you could be like me and like wait until like ten days before you graduate to turn in that paperwork that says like I'm graduating. <laughs> Yo. God damn, that was so stressful. Remember when I stressed. You and everyone else we lived without with that. Me and Amanda both didn't turn ours in. And yeah. we had to, like, you had to get it signed by, like, the department chair of, like, every major and your minor and, like, professors. And just, like, so many people had to sign this paper. And you had to, like, show up to their weird office hours while still going to your normal classes. And it was, like, literally... Like the Olympics of college yeah. was getting that paper t- filled out, and I waited <laughs> until like eight days before I graduated, and my name wasn't even in the program. Oh my god! And my parents were so mad that my name wasn't in the program. That's and they were like, up. "Are they even gonna call your name?" I'm like, "Yeah," because they don't fucking read the program. Like they have a list, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> you left before it even, uh, <laughs> it even got called. Um, I hate turning in like paperwork now that's like actually has to be like physical paperwork that you have to sign. Like if it's not electronic signing, it's like such a hassle. I love DocuSign. Yeah. Like where do I fax something or print something or scan it? You know what I'm saying? Like I sign everything with my finger. Yeah. Now. Like the other day I had to get something notarized and it was like, what year is it? (laughs) Like, why do I have to have someone just breathe on me while I sign a paper and then they just stamp it? Like that's all, like they're not doing anything. Like it's just like witnessing Mm -hmm. that it was me. Like I get that. That's such a old fashioned type of thing. Like how about you just like take my thumbprint or something more. My touch ID, you know what I'm saying? Yo. Yo, when are they going to start incorporating Touch ID with like signing? Well, now paperwork? they actually opened up Touch ID for like payment for or for like developers to use within apps. Like you can uh, u- like you can utilize that technology now or whatever. It's weird. Yeah. What it's, do you think people are going to make? I don't know. And it's just more like I guess signing into secure things. things. Yeah. Yeah, because like you can do that to like sign into your bank and shit. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is They should from, do that for Sephora. I don't want anyone getting my <laughs> points. <laughs> this is from Bridget Gary Davis, who said, uh, have you guys played the games Limbo or Inside by Play Dead? And yes, we did play those. And I didn't play Limbo. Oh. Uh, but we played Inside. Yeah. I, I didn't play all of it. You did. I loved them. I think Inside is fantastic. I want to play Limbo because it's spoopy. It is very spoopy. They're very dark. They are fucking really and dark. The the... I was going to say the cinematic. The cinematics. Vision. The visuals. The visuals. You are know, fantastic. Uh, Bridget also said, also, I received my coffee with Rachel mug today, and I love everything about it. The decals are vibrant and gorgeous, <laughs> and I like that the handle is large so that I can hold it with all of my fingers instead of two, like a teacup. Bad explanation for a lovely mug that oh is comfortable God. to hold. That's got to be, like, the nicest review of our fucking merch. <laughs> that was so detailed. Thank well, you. Well, we're glad you like it. If you like the ergonomic mug. <laughs> if you like that uh, artwork on there, um, you'll be excited to know that uh, Speedy we're- Dumb is uh, making some more artwork for us. Our girl Michelle. Yeah. Oh my God. Speaking of Michelle, if you're listening to this. Oh my God. This is so fucking. <laughs> God, I can't believe you're going to tell this story. I right have now. to. Uh-huh. So the other night while I was watching Palmer Clay tutorials in bed, <laughs> Chris was sleeping and I was like on Pinterest, like scrolling through DIYs. And he starts like talking in his sleep. Yeah, I do this every once in a while. It has to be. It's on times where he is extremely stressed out and extremely tired. So obviously you had your like thing. Yeah. After, yeah, whatever. Um, so he's like sleeping, he starts grumbling, and I like get over to like listen, and all I hear him say is Michelle. And I'm like, who the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, Chris, Chris, and he's like, Ugh. and I'm like, you're talking in your sleep, and you're like, you need an orange, is what he told me. <laughs> he told me, shut up, bitch, get some vitamin C. Yeah, come that? on, man, you need to get that. And then I woke C. him up, and I was like, Chris, you were just talking in your sleep, and you were like, Ugh. and then you just rolled over. <laughs> and then I told you the next day, and I think we, 
read your email, Michelle, about the artwork for the mugs. And I was like, oh, fuck, that's the Michelle. Uh, Michelle, you you need an orange. We're like, oh, hey, I have to reply to this email. (laughs) Because I do that, too. Like, I think about, like, all the shit I have to do or, like, the the people I talk to during my day, like, really impact my dreams. Yeah. All right. So why don't we go to Reddit to uh, see what other questions that we have. Sipping. My coffee is honestly cold. I really want a topper, but I really don't want to get up. I'm kind of, (laughs) like, locked in here. Lochte. <laughs> oh, fuck. fuck. I can't believe that he got, like, ambushed at Dancing with the Stars. Did we even talk about that? I don't I, know if we I want to watch the video. I haven't seen that. But. Yeah. All right. So, hi, y'all. I started my vegan journey a few days ago, and I was wondering if you guys are vegans, too. I know you prefer not to eat so much meat or dairy, but do you consider yourselves vegans? I don't really consider myself a vegan. I just yeah. know that I have a lot of vegan meals. Yeah. And, I mean, in the house, we don't buy meats. Uh, and, like, but, but, I mean, dairy, like... But. Yeah, I mean, like, I would we never have like, put that honey, label because I'm not like know? trying to do any like work because I, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not making my food my activism. If that makes yeah, sense. we're not labeling our dieting. She doesn't, I, I, that would put a lot of guilt on me. Yeah. And we, we can't do that with food, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, but I just, we are pretty plant based. I, yeah, I would say, yeah. And plus, it, I love that we like do other things that impact the environment, like not have a car. Yeah. And like, if we get a car, it'll be like a an Tesla. electric car. <laughs> I, well, I, I'm determined to not buy a car until I can get a Tesla. <laughs> I know. Because, like, I just, I would love to know that, like, if I had to have a car, that it wasn't going to be one of those things that's, like, stealing the earth. <laughs> yeah. Like, I could never feel good. Especially if you're going to spend, like, a lot of money on a car. Like, I could just never feel good about that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But, yeah. Yeah, so. And plus, we're very recycle bitches. I don't know. We're just, like... We're just doing what we can over here. Exactly. Fuck my phone. All right, so iOS 10 really sucks with unlocking your phone. Anyone else agree? I have not updated yet solely for that reason because there's some things that I want, but I honestly, I don't know if I'm a fan of iOS 10. I know. They're going to have to patch it. There's a way that you can turn off this thing, but I just haven't done it yet. So. Uh, okay. All right. Given the chance, would you throw cold spaghetti at Taylor Dosey? Because I would, especially at a town meeting. See... I love Taylor. I would not do anything mean to anybody except Dean. I would. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or in Christopher. Oh, and Christopher. Yeah. I would antagonize Taylor Dosey, though. Oh, you know? yeah. Antagonize him like Lorelai does at the meetings, but not throw some spaghetti at yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> and then someone said, best question. I just think of him sitting in the fucking candy shop with the taking a shot of whipped cream, like looking sad. Oh, my God. Honestly, me after a long day. <laughs> Flip-flops versus Birkenstocks. Are socks appropriate with either? Are flip-flops solely accept- socially acceptable? Which do you feel describes the chunks? Sandals could also be considered. Also, fun fact, flip-flops are called thongs in Australia. Wow. We sometimes call them thongs here, but not often. You're, like, yeah. old if you do that. Yeah. Uh, flip-flops and I sandals. Like, you know how everybody, or, like, drags Birkenstocks and they're, yeah. like, coming back? Mm-hmm. I love it. I think they're cute and, like, simple, like... They're not, I wouldn't wear them to a wedding, but I would wear them <laughs> like running around town. You look With casual. With socks or no? That's so Seattle though. Like everyone here. Yeah. That was like the first thing I learned moving here. It was like, hi, Space Needle's not tall, doesn't rain, and everyone has Birkenstocks. I was like, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Is that not true? It's so true. That's like the three identifiers. <laughs> Um, yeah. Also, what were the other questions? Sandals with, or both of them with socks. Um, um you can wear Birkenstocks with socks, because I honestly don't want to see your fucking feet. But not flip-flops, Flip-flops with socks is, like, just a hard... I'm not a fan of flip-flops in general, Ugh. except for, like, if you're wearing them with shower you're shoes. You're in a dorm shower. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm definitely not, like, they're socially acceptable, especially when I see, like, dudes wearing, like, leather ones. I'm like, it's not any better. Mm-hmm. It's not... It's really not. Squeezy doesn't wear anything open-toed, so he is not a fan of any of these. Lila would be a Birkenstock, I feel. No, Lila would be like a light-up sneaker. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, like... The way she's hanging off the bed right now. (laughs) Yeah, she looks Um, really (laughs) fucked up right now. (laughs) Also, I would say sandals are appropriate in general. Okay. Okay. Tips for saving up to move to a new city slash away from home. I know you guys sort of went on a spending ban before you moved to Seattle, and I'm having trouble figuring out how to enforce it for myself and what I need to be cutting back on. Thanks. Well, we were definitely, like, 
staying inside, not really like I wasn't spending money on drinks out or like yeah. going out to movies or restaurants we were trying to avoid. Mm-hmm. It's basically just like trying to get all of your essentials, but not like I wasn't buying new video games or anything. Right. Like that. I wasn't buying new makeup. I was only buying like essentials. the things I was running out of. And I was even then like buying travel size. <laughs> yeah. So. Cause you got like, you have so much shit to do. And also just like cutting back on the cost of like moving things by, you know, like we decided to get rid of so much shit so that we wouldn't have to ship as much. Mm-hmm. Selling uh, things. Selling stuff. To make a little bit of money. We sold a lot of furniture. We sold electronics. Um, there's, you'd be surprised at what you could sell, honestly. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I guess it depends on like if you're flying, moving or driving, moving, but yeah. Cause if you're driving, I feel like you get a lot, but then you have to also pay for the gas. So there's yeah. pros and cons. I always recommend if you can get a U-Haul truck because they're fucking cheap as hell yeah. and it works great. As long as you can return it to the right You spot. can drive, you can drive them one way. Oh, really? Yeah. A one way. It costs you? a little bit more, but it's worth it. Yeah. It's worth it's it. It's worth it if it's far away. <laughs> But yeah, good that's luck. how we moved down to the uh, to our first apartment in Millersville as I drove a truck just one way. Um, have you ever struggled with binge eating? I don't know if like I don't really know if any of my eating behaviors are like problematic or not. You know what I mean? Like I'm very like not educated on the subject. Yeah. But I would say because I have that view that probably not. But I, there's definitely times where like I have binge eaten like circumstantially, I guess, or whatever, like like in response to like a stressful situation or overeating in general i mean i do that uh no i think you just forget to eat at some points during the oh day and then God. you make up for it later See, that's on my problem. Like, that's, I, don't, I don't have structured meals so like everything kind of seems fucking off and that's yeah. why i'm not like gaining or losing weight i'm just like i stay in the middle <laughs> Like, cause I like, wouldn't say it's binge eating. No, but. it's just like, hey, she didn't eat all day and then is like dead, remember has a that headache. Food. And then is like, oh yeah, remember when I was not busy <laughs> and I forgot to like drink water, pee. Do any bodily function. I like die by like five o'clock on some days if you leave me alone. Because <laughs> like, I'm just like, shit, I, I just am very bad at taking care of myself sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to Twitter now. This is an interesting one. Would you and Chris consider yourselves hack Chris consider hey. relationship goals? Like, would we consider ourselves? I don't think like, I feel like every couple is going to like every, okay. First of all, every person is different. And so every couple is going to be different. And so what works for us isn't going to necessarily work for other people. Yeah. And like, I just think like putting a lot of like energy into like idolizing a relationship that like seems together can be like bad. Cause mm-hmm. then when they break up, it's like, Oh, Brangelina. Yeah, Brangelina. <laughs> but uh, no, I don't know. I wouldn't know. say that we're goals. I mean, yes, we definitely do things right. I don't think we're fucking up. But, yeah. Like, I mean, we're working, but like, you know, but it's working for us because it's what it's for us. You know what I mean? It's like not for anyone else anyway. I don't think that like, you know, obviously I think communication in any relationship is a good one, but uh, that's about the only thing that I can think of that like should That we excel the fuck at. Yeah, and also that, like, you should, like, take away from our relationship. Like, if you're looking to ours to, like, bottle after, just take the communication part and that's about it. Just run with it. Yeah. Um, what are your, what are you and the Chunks as <laughs> cereal brands? Oh, God. Uh, Squeezy's, like, brand flakes. Oh, yeah. He's, like, Raisin, Raisin Brand brand Crunch. Sunshine. <laughs> Raisin Brand Crunch. And Lila's, like. Like, Boo Berries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What am I? I'm, I'm definitely special cake. Cause that's my fave. <laughs> oh my god! What am I gonna be? Oh my god! Your pumpkin nose, you little fucko. Oh my god! <laughs> You're like a honey nut. Can I be, Cheerio. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm like a honey nut Cheerio. Yeah, you are. I, Pretty I basic, but a little bit of sweetness. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's the best kind of coffee to drink on a cold, spoopy night? Happy autumnal equinox. That is today. Today's the first oh day of the Oh my autumn. god, whoa. You don't even say anything about it, you fake-ass meteorologist. You're the Listen. ones that people are saying are lying. <sighs> Listen. How did I know that? Because <laughs> I just, I feel like my nipples get harder in the fall. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just something inside Listen, of me. Listen, I don't like, know the like, dates, yes. but it's not the first day of meteorological fall. That's different. Oh, suck my cloud, bitch. <laughs> like, honestly, whatever. This is, like, when the rest of the world celebrates fall. So you and your little, like, fake scientist friends, like, climate change my ass, you know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was my Trump impression. 
um, <laughs> coffee, though, oh. for a cold, spoopy fall Domestic day. Domestic Geek has a, like, coffee pumpkin spice creamer recipe on her channel. Mm-hmm. And we make that. You can make it with, like, you know, almond milk or something. She uses half and half, but you could use, like, whatever you normally put Don't in you your put, coffee. put, like, fucking pumpkin puree yeah you put like a little and spices yeah the pumpkin spices pumpkin pumpkin (laughs) pumpkin (laughs) puree and then like the whatever milk cream and then you just like put in a mason jar and shake it the fuck up i think there's also a little bit of like pure maple syrup for sweetness oh yeah there was yeah and then you just put that in your hot coffee or you you heat that up and then put it in your hot coffee oh fuck me (laughs) fucking fantastic okay I'm a new listener. Hello. Hi. So, do you have any episodes you'd recommend me to listen to, like a best of CWC? Oh, See, I God. forget everything we record the moment I stop. Yeah, pretty much everything I remember is not remembered. It's out the window. I would say uh, uh, Lilac and Chunk Trotter, just because I remember the title of it. That, that's the only <laughs> one I remember the title of. I just remember it being really fucking funny. Um, The Chutney. Oh, yeah, with Megan. And I would say, like, whenever we talk about Chris's childhood. <laughs> that was the second episode, okay. was our childhood stories. Honestly, I recommend just listening in order and hoping for the best. <laughs> Listen to all the episodes. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> um, but anyway, thanks for listening. Yeah, welcome. What's your favorite memory of yours and Chris's from college? Uh, What's your favorite college memory? Like, like a together memory no i'm not like like, gonna be like if you don't pick a moment that i was in we're done it could be anything that you did in college (sighs) i don't know what mine is Uh, it's a very tough one because like honestly getting squeezy is on there (laughs) it's not anything related to school but it's just we got him and we took him to our college apartment and we had to hide him and it was honestly i like almost fucking passed out on this day but i was really oh, the jazzed to my the, the way that we moved to our first apartment. Oh like, my god, he did. He didn't eat. I was so he nervous. So nervous. Because listen, I had to drive like the biggest fucking moving truck ever. And he had never and, driven one before. Like I've driven a moving truck before, but like not that fucking big. And like my dad, my dad shit. was fucking there, and he didn't drive it. And like he made me drive it. And, why like, did he make you? I, I don't get why. I don't fucking know. He was just there to like help move things, but like I had to drive the fucking truck. It's huge. And I'm driving up windy ass back roads, and it was stressful. And I didn't eat anything. And then we finally we get to your house, and it's hot because it's like August. We get to your house. We pick up all the shit there after I loaded up everything in mine at my house in the morning. Oh, my God. And then your dad dragged my parents because they were like, we're too good to pick up this furniture and help you guys put it into the moving truck. Yeah. And your dad was like, why the fuck are they just like standing there like not doing shit? I'm like, <laughs> classic Whitehurst. Um, <laughs> but then then we had to drive like another hour and a half down to fucking Millersville and yeah. then unload everything. And as we were unloading everything, it hit me. And then like also, I almost like passed the fuck out. Our one roommate didn't help you move any of the big furniture. And it was just like me, you, and like... Your My dad's. Dad. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it. My mom showed up at some point, too. Oh, yeah, because your mom went grocery shopping for us. Yeah. Oh, that was so nice. I still remember being like, that. Yeah, she nice just showed thing. up randomly with fucking groceries and was like, here you go. It was like one of the nicest moments of my life, personally. <sighs> yeah, so, I mean, that was a really good day. Yeah, because I was really excited we to have an apartment. We were moving in together. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, well, this is, like, where we were going to be just, like, living for... We were so excited. Yep. And we had, like, your dad gave us his bed. Not his bed, but, like, a bed from his house, and it was, like, yeah, it was, nice like, one. the bed that I was using when I got, was at his house. It was, like, a bougie bed. And it we was, were, like... It was a big bed. Just so excited to not be sleeping on a twin anymore, because we were sharing a twin bed for, like, the last two years of our relationship. <laughs> it was horrible. Um, my favorite memory, I guess, besides, like, getting squeezy, I would say is... Uh, I mean, like, I have a lot of, like, miniature memories, I feel. Like, I just, I enjoyed, like, my first year and, like, how exciting it all was and how yeah. new and going mm-hmm. to the dining hall and, like, running. I, I think my favorite memories were, like, literally me just, like, walking down a sidewalk, holding a cup of coffee that I just picked up from the library and yeah. walking to, like, one of the buildings far away, like, McComsey and, like... There's, like, fall leaves everywhere, and I'm listening to, like, Florence's first album, and I'm just, like, that's college for me. Yeah. Like, walking to class in the cold. Fucking freshman year was just, like, a good time overall, because that's, like, when we're all figuring things out. It was such a cold year, too. That was, like, the coldest winter, and it was just, like, a fun year. 
That's before everyone got fucked up, you know? Yeah, that's before things got really It was like I had just gotten off like, oh, I don't live at home anymore. Like, this is so exciting. Like, I don't have to deal with my fucking parents anymore. And it was mm-hmm. great. And then, yeah, I loved that year. That was fantastic. Okay. Have you ever felt a hand as soft as that guy from Spoon? This is my friend Jackie that I went to high, well, elementary school probably too, but like high school. And we both went to a, uh, fuck, an arcade fire concert yeah when we were in high school and because she worked at the man in philly like where all the concerts are Mm -hmm. and we met spoon because she worked there so we got to like go backstage and we met spoon and like we shook hands and his hand was very soft and i remember like (laughs) that was like my iconic (laughs) anecdote for a while (laughs) and i also ate like brownies and i was like oh i'm so cool oh my god and i was coffee coffee and i was underage so i couldn't like drink and i felt like really insecure about it Uh, because like everybody had the wristband yeah Good times. Yeah, remember that. Remember not having a right wristband, you know? <laughs> Don't have to deal with that shit anymore. It's nice. <laughs> if you could have an HGTV show, what would it be of? Oh my god, can we make it like the Rev Run show or the Vanilla Ice show? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would want like... How to renovate your house for having cats now. <laughs> oh my god, the coolest cat homes of yeah. America. Or of the world. Extreme cat homes. Extreme cat homes. Okay, yes. Or like I would do like really cool studio apartments of the yeah. world. Because we have lived small in small spaces studios. but not tiny homes. Not tiny homes, but like small apartments. Yeah. Also like any apartment shows. I feel like there's a lack of like rental. On that Because I feel like they channel? just, like, look down upon anybody that rents. Yeah, they're like, in this market? <laughs> like, okay, well, I just saw online that there was, like, a $207 million home in Tacoma. For wow. Sale. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? That's too much. Um, we're never going to be able to buy a house here, guys. Um, <laughs> also, <laughs> have you given any thought to the me and three fictional characters trend? I've thought about this a lot. The what? On Twitter, people are, there's like a little picture that you post and it's like, just post three photos of three fictional characters that like represent you as a person. Oh. Yours would be Eric Foreman, (laughs) like Luke Skywalker, and then like, who's a scientist? I was about to say Bill Nye, but he's a real man. (laughs) Um, He's not a fictional character. Just pick some science ass fucking bitch and then you got them. I don't know who I would be. Who's like oh a God. notorious bi character? Um, well, good luck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, w- I would say like Callie Torres, but I'm not as confident or like I'm not a fucking doctor. <laughs> um, so, ooh, I'll just do like Callie and then I don't know who that is. I don't know. This is a hard one. I know. It's yeah. very hard. I've been thinking about it. Someone make it up for me. I didn't know that that was a thing that was yeah. happening. I like that there's new like trends like that happening on like Twitter. youtube tags but they're on twitter and like cuter. the seven fave whatevers you yeah. know that was going Keep it around. up, guys we like it it's pretty fucking cool all right well i guess that's the uh that's the thick of it <laughs> yeah that's the end well thank you guys so much for having a cup of coffee with us yes yeah, it's fantastic we hope you enjoyed this hot fresh episode of coffee with cradle 111 <laughs> 111. We'll see you Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. I forget what day it is. Bye. Well, that was shaky. That was a shaky clink. Hello, Beach Bunches. Hello. You guys are going to your nine to five. You're in the office. Yes. So let's just start it off with Nicole Dowling is down in the kitchen getting some lunch. Carissa is cruising around the parking lot trying to find a spot. Oh, bless you, Lila. Alicia Schreiner has built a Funko Pop shrine in their cubicle. Bailey Lynn is adding some Baileys to their coffee because it's Monday. Jackie Goldfarb has a golden stapler that everyone is jealous of. Oh, is it Nate Burkus? <laughs> um, Sloan Nolan is waiting for an extremely slow fax machine. Do people still use those? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Sarah Booth is being booed for losing an important client. Whoa. Allison Sense is trying to get work on a project that makes no sense. Hunter Curtis is hunting their co-workers with a Nerf gun. Megan Rackley is racking up the points in Candy Crush instead of working. <laughs> Kate Convery is having a conversation at the water cooler. Whoa, made for you. <laughs> Danielle Manis is the office manager refilling the coffee pot. Taylor Collins is calling an important client. Emma Corbeal has a corner cubicle with lots of extra leg space. 
Heather Ann takes way too long to answer emails. Sloan Fuller's inbox couldn't be fuller. <laughs> Angelica Feliz is convincing everyone to use jail inserts in their work shoes. It's literally, Chris. Emma Gren is emailing a coworker about a stolen bagel. Courtney Hall is running down the hall because they're late for a meeting. Becca Jansen can't wait until January because then they're getting promoted. Angela Sue is wearing a purple suit and getting some strange stares. Why? Rock that suit, binge. <laughs> Michelle North feels like they're at the North Pole because the office AC is blasting. Aaron Bray was brave enough to test a random food someone left in the kitchen. Oh my god. <laughs> Risky. <laughs> Alice and Teresa doesn't have any windows in their cubicle and misses the sun. Jada Goshi didn't go to work today because they called out sick. My Elizabeth is listening to a podcast while doing busy work. Laura Collins is prank calling the office tattletale. Ishbel Mendez just bought a new belt for work and is showing it off. Tolly Miller is milling around with their co-workers at the weekly brunch. I want a weekly brunch. <laughs> Kat Vallejos is shaking the vending machine, trying to get a Kit Kat bar to drop out. Margarita is trying to convince some co-workers to leave early for margaritas. Me. Early margs. <laughs> Shut up, Chris. <laughs> Hannah Labelson is labeling all of their food in the fridge. Daisy Blossom Dottie likes to have a vase of blossoming flowers on their desk. Tongue twister. Emily Lewis's inbox is empty and has nothing to do. Chloe Archer has one of those weird office chairs that prevents you from arching your back. Really? Yeah, there's weird ergonomic chairs and shit. I want a cool chair. <laughs> Uh, I want one of those, like, ball chairs, but I know the chunks will pop. Yeah, that's weird. Um, Anthony Hood needs some post-it notes, but can't find any. Mariah Hanna is hand-delivering everyone their mail. Elizabeth Hallbrook is reading a book at their desk on their lunch break. Jennifer Habgood doesn't think the office coffee is very good. Madison Greer is decorating the office with green for St. Patrick's Day. Madison Wolf is wolfing down their lunch because they've got a lot of work to do. Megan McNally is stopping by McDonald's on their lunch break. Skylar Medley takes a break outside so they can remember what the sky looks like. <laughs> Megan Prius is taking a company Prius on a joyride. <laughs> Corey Springfield is spring cleaning their cubicle. Me. Cat is petitioning to get cats in the office. If you can have fucking dogs... <laughs> Ilka accidentally drank someone else's milk from the kitchen. Ooh, Jax has a secret bottle of Jack Daniels stashed in their cubicle. <laughs> Nicole Allen came into the office with a cold and is blowing their nose every two seconds. Courtney White is reloading the printer with white paper. Bridget Carey Davis is carrying in a special lunch treat for the whole office. Jennifer Cornwell sends a corny joke to everyone's email every day. Sophia Cock is relaxing on the sofa in the break room. Ash Rozelle is ashing their cigarette in the parking garage. Jackie Burkhart doesn't have the heart to tell their friend they got fired. Yikes. Beth Fonseca is not fond of their co-worker and just wears headphones all day. Jackie Bergiulio is always wearing their jacket in the office. Well, it's cold. The AC, bitch. Yeah. Christina Contreras is losing control of the printer, and it's starting to smoke. <laughs> Catherine Simpson has a simple desk set up with only the bare necessities. Marlene Naj leaned against the water cooler and sent it spilling all over the floor. Ian Murphy is waiting for a new pot of coffee to brew. Caitlin Whalen is wailing about salmon getting destroyed in the microwave. What? The fuck? <laughs> Cater Liriano is leering across the cubicles at Caitlin because they microwaved fish. Like, who does that? <laughs> Rebecca O'Donnell is beckoning to their cubicle neighbor to talk quieter. Kendall Berg just burped loudly in the whole office heard. <laughs> Allie McGregor parked in the secret back alley spot no one knows about. Megan Grilly is the boss grilling their subordinates for why nothing is getting done. Whoa. Subordinates. <laughs> subordinates. Chloe Killip is killing time and avoiding work on Twitter. Taco Roach is postmating tacos to the office. Cassandra Buckout is taking a buck out of their wallet for the vending machine. Haley Cadwalder is hanging up posters on the wall advertising a potluck. Camelia Malky lost the key to their filing cabinet and is freaking out. Maddie Pullman is instigating trouble by starting a polarizing debate. Madame Marie is amazed they haven't been fired yet. Allison Francoy is frankly disturbed that the fish smell is still lingering. Uh, Cody Robinson is robbing some post-it notes from Cassandra Buckout's desk. Lauren Chavon is shifting constantly in their uncomfortable desk chair. 
Sarah Seaman can't see anything from their cubicle and feels left out. Dana Daly is the only person to check daily if the, all the supplies are stocked. Megan Wilson is willing to take one for the team to clean out the fishy microwave. <laughs> Claire Wood loves the color of their wooden desk. Kelly Adams is adding more staples to their stapler. Is it gold? Oh, my God. <laughs> Anna Hernandez is desperate for time to move faster so they can get to the weekend. Jenna Gordonier was near the kitchen when Caitlin cooked the fish and is gagging. Sasha Smith is smiling for a new badge photo. Sarah is scared of getting fired and doing their job perfectly. Lynn and Drew are drawing funny pictures on the whiteboard in the meeting room. Bridget Dubin's trash bin smells horrible and is making their neighbors cringe. Hillary Gay is playing phone games like Pokemon Go instead of working. Mackenzie Knight works the night shift and doesn't get to hang out with everyone else. And Rachel Evans is eventually going to decorate their cubicle. Get on it, Ben. <laughs> all right, the other beach bonches. I would say they are all uh, smelling they, the fish fall out. Okay. You know, they have hands covered. <laughs> We've got Cassandra Lee. Allie Malone. Kathleen Wynn. And Rose Barnett. So thank you guys so much. We hope you had a lovely day at work or yeah. wherever else you're doing normally. Mm-hmm. All right, well, uh, we'll just see you next time. Bye. Bye. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>